Hello everyone, this is Julia. Thank you so much for joining me on my craft room adventures and welcome to day two of my 2020 holiday card series. Today I'm sharing with you this letter to Santa card featuring Mama Elephant stamps and dies. I started out by stamping my images onto Nina Solo White cardstock using uh, Gina K Amalgam ink and I'm coloring the images with Copic markers. Uh, initially, I plan to uh, make this a landscape card featuring the mama and the papa bear, but uh, I really couldn't get the layout to work with the mailbox, so in the end it's just the mama bear with a little cub, so I'm only showing the coloring for the one bear, but I will just skip it back and forth. I'm using my favorite E50 markers to color the bears in. I used E55 as my darkest shade, blended that out with E53. Now I'm using E51 to blend that color out a lot further. Just where I want those shadows to be. Now I'm going in uh, with a second layer of the E55, just to emphasize those shadows. Again with the E53. Just making sure to blend out the E55 to get a smooth transition. And as usual, I leave the lightest areas white until I'm ready for my final layer. I wanted to have the cup a little bit lighter, so I just went in with the E53 as my darkest shade. I went back in with E51 to blend out the E53 on the little mama bear, just going over the transition areas and pulling the color further into the image. Then I'm blending out the E53 with the E51 on the little cub. And now I'm going in with E50 as my lightest shade to blend the colors together. I realized that I forgot to put a little shadow above the is it snout? And just blending that out, I used the E53 for that. Just going over everything. But I realized that there wasn't enough separation between the, the cub and the mama bear, so I just went in with E55, blending that out where she's holding him or her uh, with E53. And then again with E51 and E50 to blend everything together. I also went over the same uh, with the same colors uh, over the tails and also added some E50 on the tummy just to get a nice transition. For my pink shades I'm using R80 markers. My darkest shade is the R85 and I'm blending that out with R83. As you can see, I also stamped out some letters that I did not end up using. Um, I did end up just going with the die cut letters, but I used the... Uh, I masked off the penguin from the little penguin agenda to get that little letter stamp. Like I said, the R80 markers R85 as my darkest, then going in with R83. Blending that out a little bit. Also doing the same for the hearts that will go in the envelope. Then blending that out with R81. And to make sure it's just a really light pink, my lightest shade is uh, RV000. Just going over the lightest areas there. But it does have a lot of the uh, colorless blender in it, so it pushed back the other color quite a bit, so I'm going back in with the R81 just to bring that back a little bit, then blending that out with the RV000, and that finishes off my pink coloring. I'm just using some blush to add to my critters. I 
And now it's time to work on my background. I'm using a panel of Bristol Smooth cardstock. Like I said before, uh, at this point I was still thinking I was going to make a landscape card, but luckily I could just trim it down to work for a portrait card as well. Uh, I'm using sponge sugar and picked raspberry. I wanted it to be a light pink and the sponge sugar was just a little bit too pale. So I went in with the picked raspberry just lightly and went over it with a sponge sugar just to tone it down so it's not like bright, bright pink. I just added some white splatters to mimic snow and I die cut the winter forest cover and also some hill panels. Uh, and I used the Sukineko Shimmer Spritz on top to add shine there. I die cut the mailbox from snail mail out of some light blue cardstock and I'm ink blending it with tumbled glass and broken china. Uh, I used the light blue cardstock just to have an easier time blending because the base color is already there. I thought that the tumble glass would allow me to add some shading, but it was almost the same color, so it didn't do that much. But I used it to blend out the edges. I uh, am going in with quite a bit more of the uh, broken china in a bit because there just wasn't enough definition just yet. So I'm just adding in some more of the broken china just to get a nice edge around the mailbox. And I'm also adding the snowy splatters on top of that. Now it's time to trim down my uh, winter forest cover. I am just using scissors to cut apart the, uh, the background. I'm leaving the top and bottom part attached so that I have an easier time tearing the trees because I do like the spacing and I'm just using them as is. So just cut them down to size and I'm using liquid glue to adhere them to my panel. Just lining it up, making sure that the edge overhangs on both sides. And now I'm just using my trimmer to cut off any of the excess. Now I'm also uh, using the envelopes from the snail mail die set. And I just die cut two of those. I used some uh, C3, C1 and C0 markers just to add some shading on the envelopes. Just along the score lines uh, that the die creates or the... Yeah, the, the markings, it's not really meant to be scored, but uh, I think you know what I mean. And now I'm just using uh, liquid glue. You could just uh, not glue them shut and add a little message inside, but I decided to just glue them down flat. I'm using the Scripty Christmas stamp set, and I chose the Cinnamon Warm Holiday Hugs to add to my mailbox. I'm just lining that up in my Misty using some anti-static powder back to remove any static cling. Uh, I did let the mailbox dry for a long time to make sure that all the ink and the splatters are dry before heat embossing. And now I'm just using Versamark to stamp my sentiment. The embossing powder I'm using is the Opaque Bright White in Superfine by WOW. And off to the side, my heat gun was already heating up so that it's nice and hot before I take it to the paper. But now I'm just running it over the panel until it's smooth and melted. I die cut the uh, scallop frame rectangles by Lawn Fawn three times out of white cardstock. And I'm just layering those on top of each other using liquid glue just to get some dimension for my frame. Making sure they are lined up nicely. I also die cut the tree panel and also my hill panel using the scalloped frame because I wanted to make sure that the inside panels would fit exactly inside my frame. Here I'm just figuring out the placement of my hill panel, how high I would need it to be for the uh, air to actually put the letter in the mailbox. I cut down a card base. I used a regular sized card base, the four and a quarter by five and a half, and I just cut off a quarter of an inch on uh, the top and the side 
just to make sure that the uh, edge would actually be the, the scallop detail and the card base wouldn't be showing beyond the scallop part, if that makes sense. I just adhered the panels inside the card base and then I realized that the slit in the mailbox needed to be covered. So I just also used a piece of cardstock with broken china and also chipped sapphire just to make that a bit darker since it would be on the inside. I used foam tape and liquid glue to adhere my mailbox down. And I also added foam tape to the back of my bears, just figuring out the placement where everything needs to go. And I'm just adhering the envelopes down with liquid glue. I just thought it's it's a simple card, but I just thought it would be really cute just to, you know, have them mail their letter to Santa and take them to the mailbox. I'm using Stardust Stickles on some of the images for added shine. And here I'm using the Nouveau Glitter Accents in Fresh Snowfall. Um, I have to be honest, I don't, I regret using this because it's kind of chunky and it doesn't come out smooth and the shine isn't that great. I ended up uh, going over it with the uh, Stardust Stickles anyway, so this is the shine you see from the Stardust Stickles. I do like that a lot better. And that finishes off my card for day two of my holiday card series. I really hope you enjoyed this one. And uh, I don't know if you've seen my previous video, I do have a little bit of a giveaway happening there. So it's still open until the 15th of November. I will link to the video for the giveaway down below. So if you want to go and check it out, feel free to do so. It's just a small little giveaway, but uh, yeah, I would love it if you would participate to celebrate reaching 1000 subscribers on YouTube. Thank you so very much for watching. Have a wonderful day. Stay safe and healthy. Until next time. Bye.